and thank you and welcome everybody uh, to our webinar today. We certainly appreciate you taking your time to get more acquainted uh, with our banking and treasury automation solution for Dynamics AX. Today's session is uh, going to focus specifically on, on one of the modules within our, our overall suite. The theme of the day is uh, bank reconciliation in Dynamics AX automated. So obviously this focuses on the ability to automate your banking reconciliation process in Dynamics AX across all entities and all bank accounts that you may, uh, may be dealing with in, in one and the same process. So we say that you can reduce the manual involvement uh, by 90%. Uh, in fact, this may be an understatement, as we'll show you further into the, uh, the webinar today. You can, in fact, uh, automate this process uh, 100% if everything uh, flows uh, through correctly in the solution. If we take a, a high-level view on, on the importance of the bank reconciliation process and what we're dealing with, as you'll find uh, today, uh, many users, and most users, in fact, uh, both in Dynamics AX and and other accounting systems as well um, have to go through the, the reconciliation process uh, manually. Uh, you go through a process where you have to cross-check between your bank bank account statements against your against your ledger in your accounting system. So obviously, this can be a very tedious and a very error-prone uh, process, and it takes a lot of time, especially if uh, if you have a large amount of, of uh, transactions and if you're dealing with multiple or numerous uh, bank accounts at the same time. Because it's a critical process, it also typically involves some, some expensive key individuals or key individual to sit and go through this process, and that obviously makes this uh, an even more expensive process where we see that the uh, end users typically spend way more time on, on this process than, than they even realize. Um, and the reality is that it is an unnecessarily expensive process because with our solution, you can turn it into a, a fully automated process. So when you leverage our solution for bank reconciliation, you obviously get uh, an increased uh, accuracy, you get a higher level of efficiency, and we have customers that literally save, uh, save days of work and are today uh, going through the bank account uh, reconciliation uh, process in a matter of, uh, of minutes. The installation and configuration of the solution is fairly easy. It's a very natural extension of, uh, of your standard AX system. So users and, and installing the solution will be, be a fairly easy process for you. What you'll also like about the solution is that customers uh, will get an increased uh, level of flexibility and scalability uh, since you'll be able to automate uh, this process across all your business entities and all your accounts. So as you may be aware of today in standard AX, you can't do bank reconciliation um, on a single account level, but in our solution, no matter uh, the number of accounts that you're dealing with, uh, you can include all those in the one and the same process. So this obviously uh, makes it possible for, for customers to, um, to process a large amount of data and large amount of uh, transactions in one and the same uh, process. As you'll see, uh, one of the nice features as well is the ability to, to also auto-post some of dif the differences that you are looking for in the pro this process. So this can be bank fees, there can be interest charges and so on, that you are able to have the solution post automatically and this is where we can get to the level of 100% automation if the system catches all, all these differences and post them automatically. So again, you can leverage a, a fully unattended process from end to end with the solution. As a little background uh, for those of you who may not know uh, too much about SK Global Software, uh, we are a Microsoft Dynamics uh, ISV and we've been building and delivering solutions uh, for more than 20 years and uh, we're focusing obviously around the, the banking and treasury automation suite and also with a newer solution around revenue automation and revenue recognition for advanced contract management as well. We are very proud to be working with a large number of very close uh, Dynamics partners. We work with more than 400 uh, partners globally uh, and you're welcome to contact your own uh, Dynamics AX reseller if you're interested in, in our solution as an end user. 
Uh, another uh, added value uh, from working with us is that we have uh, by far the most extensive network of banks and financial platforms that we integrate to as an out-of-the-box uh, feature, if you will, for customers. Uh, so no matter whether you as a customer are banking with a local credit union in the U.S. or you work with multiple uh, bank accounts uh, globally, or bank, sorry, Globally, we you can be sure that we integrate as uh, as out of the box uh, plug and play formats to those banks for you. And of course, we are ready uh, with our solution on the Neo Dynamics AX, also referred to as AX7. Uh, today, we will be showing you um, a little bit uh, or most of this uh, the presentation in AX2012, and we'll also show some screens from AX7. Uh, so this may in fact be the last time that we will be truly demoing in an in an AX2012 uh, uh, format. We'll see about that. Just a quick uh, overview uh, in terms of the customers that we are working to working with today. We are quickly approaching uh, 1,500 Dynamics customers globally, some of the largest operating in, in more than 80 countries and with revenue just uh, above 12 billion uh, US dollars. So we truly work with customers from uh, you can say the low uh, end of the scale up to true enterprise uh, class customers. And of course, uh, with this solution being applicable and valuable for uh, pretty much any uh, vertical or industry, we do have customers in virtually any industry that, uh, that you can think of. Some of these uh, are displayed right here. So with this, um, as I said, we're going to focus in on, on one particular module, uh, a feature of our overall solution today. I'm going to hand it over to Tim Kahn, CTO and co-founder of SK Global Software, who will go into more depth um, of the solution itself. Thank you, Jonas. Appreciate that introduction and welcome everyone. Uh, as, as Jonas has said, we're now going to dive in a lot deeper into the uh, bank reconciliation piece. But uh, before we begin, I do want to give just an overview of the, the solution. Uh, as many of you are aware that have been with us for a while or just new to us, we're, we're continuing to grow out our roadmap. And so we've organized <coughs> our solution around these five pillars. Uh, the first one on the left being cash management automation. Uh, the, the key to that, again, as Jonas has mentioned, global and enterprise-wide banking. Um, and so we'll drill into that in a lot of detail. That's the main focus of the session today. Uh, another area, of course, is vendor payment automation. Uh, as many of you are aware we have a, an extensive library of formats we deal with on the vendor side. We automate the process of creating those files that go to banks. Uh, it has two-way banking inter integration as well. We cover a number of formats uh, throughout the, the, the U.S., North America, and Europe, and around the globe. Um, as a, an extensive return file management piece as part of vendor payment automation as well. The middle pillar has to do with customer payment automation. Uh, main area there, of course, is advanced cash application, bringing in those payments from customers. We'll touch on that today in terms of bank rec as well, because as some of you know, the uh, you get incoming payments uh, from your, your customers as part of the bank reconciliation process, and we'll touch on that. In addition, we have an online portal that, that we can send invoices out to our customers. Uh, where they can then pay through a credit card, debit card, or a uh, direct debit. Uh, or we can do a, just a, a straight direct debit where we uh, send a file to the bank and, and receive monies on behalf of your customer. Then in the Treasury Connect Solutions area, it's some of the uh, new things that we're getting involved there. Uh, one is in foreign currency uh, settlement, FX settlement, uh, where we deal with a trading platform, FX All, and send vendor payments there when you have large numbers of uh, multiple currencies where you want to shop for the best currency and aggregate those together and then settle those and pay your vendors through through a counterparty. In addition, our revenue automation suite, as um, uh, Jonas mentioned, look, look forward to upcoming webinars on that solution. It deals with revenue recognition, subscription billing, and that area of the revenue side. And then finally, over in the risk management area, we have the positive pay solution for North America, Australia, and Canada, uh, where checks are being done to prevent check fraud. But then we also include our ePay solution over there because it's a fully PCI compliant uh, payment mechanism as well. So that's our, our overall uh, organization of our suite as we continue to build it out. And without further ado, then we'll drill into the bank reconciliation piece that uh, we promised you this morning. 
So what, what does Bankrec Automation Plus do? So it, it's the idea, of course, is to fully automate the bank statement. Um, uh, what we need to do is bring in those transactions that are in the bank statement, match those up with transactions in AX. However, the rest of the puzzle is to take those transactions that are not yet in AX and add them to AX and then, of course, reconcile those as well. Um, and the example I'll use throughout the discussion here is if you have a bank statement, say, of 100 transactions, maybe 80 of them are already in AX, maybe they're outgoing uh, uh, payments, maybe they're uh, transfers or anything else that you might have done in AX, and then you get the bank statement, you match those 80 up. But then maybe there are 20 transactions that are done externally to you, interest, uh, fees, incoming um, electronic payments, etc. cetera. Uh, we need to get those into AX and match those up. So that's the, the main goal of the product. Again, the various steps that we'll talk about can be as unattended as you like, from the full uh, import of the file through to the final reconciliation. Uh, we'll talk about those various features you can turn on and off. And then, as uh, Jonas briefly mentioned, uh, because we can deal with multiple uh, bank accounts in one pass, and we can deal with exceptions in one area, uh, it's very, very um, uh, valuable resource to be able to review and, and reconcile across all your legal entities and across all your multiple bank accounts. A very, very uh, a powerful feature of the product, especially for enterprise and global companies. So just as a high level, the purpose of the module, of course, to reconcile automatically. Uh, and then the two other pieces are to match those transactions, and we'll talk about tolerances that we can deal with. And then we also want to create GL entries for those transactions that are not yet in AX. And we want to do that in an intelligent and automatic fashion. Now we'll talk about the rule sets. We'll drill into that a bit as well in a little bit here. And of course, the benefit is, as, as Jonas had mentioned, decrease that financial close time. Uh, one example that Jonas was referring to is we had one of our initial customers that um, had 100,000 transactions a month, and then at the end of the month, it took them about seven days to do that reconciliation. After putting in our solution with our unmatched transaction screen, which I'll be showing you, uh, they could review those transactions on a daily basis uh, and, and, and basically resolve the uh, unmatched items uh, as the month went along. By the end of the month, they were able to finish those 100,000 transactions within one day a huge uh, increase in productivity. And then any manual reconciliation, we want to limit, we'll talk, and we'll also look at how the exception is greatly simplified by having that localized. So I've got a few high-level slides. Uh, we'll drill into the, those a bit, and then we'll go down into the feature list, uh, an extensive uh, review of that, and then, of course, we'll take a look at the actual software. Highest level, uh, the, the software begins with an automatic import process. We use the AX batch job system to uh, monitor the various folders. Uh, it's very well organized by bank account and bank, uh, so we know what formats are, we find there. We bring those in automatically, um, and as we bring them in, then we, uh, we make a note in this log so we have a complete history, and you can drill in and see how the mappings worked out in terms of taking the data from the, the bank file format and bring it into a format that we can understand and deal with reconciliation. The next major feature is the, the matchings and mappings. Um, so as we'll see in a minute, uh, as we bring these in, it's important to uh, re review the items that are not matched. Uh, and so we have what's called an unmatched screen. Um, and therefore, we can, by exception, review only those that we need to deal with. We'll talk great more detail about that in a minute. And then finally, the other high-level piece uh, of functionality is this enterprise-wide visibility, where you can see across company, across bank account, and bank statements. You get a very global picture of your organization's uh, bank account uh, situation. So the treasurer or the CFO, this is a great tool for them. In a very quick and easy manner, they can get that snapshot view of what, what are all my bank accounts doing? What, how much reconciliation do I need to do? How much is left to be done? Uh, now what we have is a slide that shows our uh, solution on the AX7 platform. Uh, what you're seeing here is the full uh, uh, e-banking suite of menu functionality. Uh, this week we'll be uh, uh, publishing it out to the Azure Gallery, available as a, one of Microsoft's uh, solutions out on the Azure Gallery. Uh, and so all the functionality that we're going to see here in 2012 is uh, duplicated as well in the AX7 platform. 
So here's a case where we have those uh, files that came in. This shows the file that came in. Then also we have the transactions that are mapped. Again, uh, the same functionality on 2012 is now available over on the AX7 platform as well. So let's start to review the features in more detail. Uh, so again, uh, the, the transaction import process is an automated uh, process. Drop a file in a folder. Uh, the the uh, AX batch job runs at whatever currents level that you'd like to set it at, and those files then are brought in. Another great feature is as soon as they're brought in, they're archived over to another folder that you've designated. So unlike AX, they're not sitting there in the folder getting clobbered by the next file that, that com comes in. So we deal with that file management piece as well as the processing. If there happens to be an error, we slide it over to an error folder, and then that's available for review as well. So we manage that, uh, that, in, um, that holding area for the files. Many people use an FTP uh, mechanism so that they either have the bank push to their network share or they set up an FTP session to pull uh, from the bank site and drop it into that folder. The automation features can run the full gamut. So uh, we start with the uh, automatic import. Uh, then we can also have an option to create a bank statement upon import if you like. Um, we then can go through our matching and our mapping. And then if all those, in, in the example I gave, we're at 100 transactions. If all 100 are matched, the, the, the 80 are matched that were in AX, the 20 are added into AX and therefore matched. Uh, and then we end up with a zero balance uh, for the unreconciled amounts. Uh, then we can finish the reconciliation completely off. Uh, we have, I think, one of our largest customers has 1,200 bank accounts. And so a large, large number of those, of course, are fully automated end-to-end uh, -end processing uh, so that the full reconciliation occurs automatically. The uh, matching and mapping will go into quite a bit of detail, but that's another piece of it in terms of that happening automatically. We'll talk about that. Uh, another very valuable feature is this pre-matching. Uh, the, the files that you get from the bank, many people uh, would like to, if they could, reconcile daily. Um, and that's, of course, not possible unless you have some kind of an automated uh, situation. Um, so the, when we bring those files in, we, we can bring them in daily, and then you can reconcile it every, any cadence you like. You could reconcile daily. You could bring them in, in daily and reconcile weekly. You could bring them in daily and reconcile monthly. You could bring them in monthly and reconcile monthly. So that combination of when you get the files and when you reconcile is completely up to your uh, situation. Uh, but when we bring those in, we then have a screen that shows us the matching status. Uh, and one of the big advantages is, again, that screen is across company and across bank accounts. So in one area, you can go in in one very, very tight focused area, uh, an individual or group of individuals can review all those transactions rather than, as Jonas had talked about, uh, as you know, Microsoft requires you to go in um, to each bank account one by one and deal with those on an individual level. So the pre-matching screen is, again, across company and across bank accounts. Having said that, of course, in that screen, as we'll see, you can filter them by company or by bank account. Uh, but if you have uh, security issues, you can use organizational hierarchy uh, to not allow certain individuals to see certain legal entities' transactions. So that's available as well, given uh, if you have organizational hierarchy set up. Spoken quite a bit about the automated matching and mapping. Uh, but of course, you can do manual matching, and we'll talk about that. And then we also have uh, what we call a click and match workbench, which allows you to do the many to many type matching. Multiple transactions in the in AX match to multiple transactions in the bank statement. Uh, we have a special case of that I'll talk about in the next slide as well. The statement inquiry, we showed a screenshot of that before. Again, the value there for the CFO or treasurer is that cross-company, cross-bank account visibility. And then formats, we'll talk about that at some length. Uh, we'll go in and show you how those formats are set up. As you may know, in AX, uh, there's, uh, AX can in, bring in a generic XML format. But uh, what you need to do in general is take the format the bank gives you and do an XSLT transform to get that into that XML format that AX can interpret. So we bypass that whole step, and we have direct formats for the MT940, which is common in Europe. The CMT053 as well is more getting to be more common in Europe in terms of the, the ISO 222 standard. Australia has an NAI format. The BAI2 is very common in the US, um, the standard there. 
And then we also can handle delimited formats of any form and fashion. Again, no XSLT transforms required and no uh, custom programming. Uh, later, I'll show you on the screens just how easy it is to do those configurations. So it's, a, it's really a, an analyst or someone to do that configuration. You don't have to bring in your development team to do that. Let's talk about some of the rules and the setup issues. Uh, so some of you may know as you bring in files from the bank, um, the various transaction types that are in those files, whether it's an MT940, whether it's a BAI2 or whatever, uh, there are various transaction types the banks provide. And then we can use those transaction types, and I'll show you in a minute uh, how we use those to do, uh, create, uh, relate them to matching and or mapping rules. So that's through our transaction type setup. There are three types of rules that we uh, incorporate with the product. Uh, the first I'll call is the parsing rule. Uh, so you may be aware that when you think of bank reconciliation, you think, well, I have a reference number, I have an amount, I have a date, uh, let me match up on those items. But then as you get into it further, you'll find that there's some things that you cannot do with those simple rules. And so, uh, but there is tend to be descriptive information as well. But the descriptive, descriptive information, unfortunately, is not standard. Uh, so there's not like a, a, a lock standard that it would have a place, say, for a customer ID or a customer name. So we've created these parsing rules that are completely configurable by, by the uh, user um, to extract information out of these descriptions. And I'll show that in some detail. Uh, and then you can get that parsed information, that little, that little uh, piece of the description that, that might be valuable. And then you can use it with our mapping or matching rules that I'll talk about in a minute. So there's a whole parsing rule setup area that you can use to really refine these other rules that we're going to talk about. The other main rule you think about with bank reconciliation is matching. And of course, their goal is to clear existing items, take bank statement items that are uh, from the bank statement, in my example, some of those 80 items, and locate their, uh, their corresponding item in AX and then mark them as cleared. We do that through what are called rule groups. Uh, rule group is a, uh, a series of rules that are uh, organized around a group ID. Um, and those rule groups can do different things. They can match on reference numbers uh, against the payment reference in AX, a deposit number, a check number. So we can do a matching uh, based on that reference number type of matching. Uh, we can also match based on dates or amounts. Uh, and so we could have multiple rules in a rule group where maybe the first rule uh, matches based on reference number. So in, in the US, if you have a check, uh, there's a check number and then there's an amount. And so therefore, we, uh, if we match those two items, we're pretty certain that that's a pretty good match. So that might be your top rule. Uh, or if you're in Europe uh, where checks aren't used, there might be a payment reference number or something of that sort that we do a match. So but then if we don't get a match at that first rule, we can go down to a second rule. We create a second rule and we say, well, if the, if the reference number matches, but the amount is off by one euro or five euros or five dollars, however it might be, we could say, well, we're going to do a match, but we're going to put a tolerance on it. And if it's within that tolerance, we're still going to do a match. And in that rule, we would then maybe set up a confidence level on that particular rule. So in the first rule, we'd say it's 100% confident if we have the, the reference number and the amount. In the second rule, now we have a, a a tolerance of say five euros, uh, we're going to still match it, but we're going to put a 90, 90 confidence on it. And we'll see how that can be used. So you can set up all kinds of rules, uh, different kinds of rules, multiple rules within a rule group. And the, the algorithm simply goes down through the rules, finding the, the, the one that does the matching for you. Another common problem um, with matching, especially with outgoing payments, when you're doing outgoing electronic payments, you may have a journal that has 10 entries in it, say 1,000 euros each. And so you send out a, uh, a payment file to the bank. There's 1,000 euros uh, uh, in it. Uh, and the, the file itself now has 10,000 euros because you've got 10 entries. Uh, when you get the bank statement comes in, they may have debited your account for the full amount in one line on the bank statement. So there might be a one line of 10,000 euros going out rather than 10 lines uh, that would match up nicely with your 10 journal entries. So we have a special type of rule, a summary journal matching rule, that will do that many, many AX to one bank statement matching. So that's done automatically. We do that through the use of the uh, AX bank transaction types. Uh, we do a totaling within that journal across all journals that are unreconciled. And we get all those totals. And then we do the matching to find which journal total matches that line in the bank statement. 
Um, and you can put a confidence level on it as well, uh, so you can review that later. But it's a very, very powerful uh, rule, very useful for those outgoing electronic payments. So with mapping rules, uh, those, their goal in life is to create those GL entries. Uh, so in my example, again, I had those 20 transactions that are not in AX to begin with, but we see them in the bank statement. So what we do is we can uh, have many different ways to create the GL entries. Some of them may be simple transaction types. So there may be a transaction type that says it's a fee or it's a, uh, an interest charge or interest being applied to your account, whatever. Um, so we can simply take those, create a rule, uh, and then say if it's a, it's a certain transaction type that's a fee, we're going to put it to this ledger account. We can go one step further, though, and create actually lookup tables and say if we find certain information in the descriptive field using our parse data, we can then look up in another table and say if I see the word, say, ACME in, in the descriptive field, I've now set up a table that says if I see the word ACME, that corresponds to ABC company in AX, and so I'm going to put it on an cust incoming customer account so I can actually put that payment uh, as an uh, on account. And so I know the other, the other issue that comes up for us, and we've looked at this deeply and will be coming up later, is that uh, one goal of a bank rec would be nice not only if we have an incoming payment that's coming uh, against a customer and put it on account, but wouldn't it be nice if we could actually settle the invoice that that's out there for that customer? And we're looking to do that uh, later this year. Uh, it's on our roadmap to be able to take the bank statement information, incoming electronic payments, and actually integrate with our ARE settlement module where we can then push that over and use our algorithms there to determine the best way to settle those invoices. So we'd actually create an AR payment journal that would then uh, be, come in and get posted and therefore the whole process would be end to end. We'd get the bank statement, we would create the AR payment journal to create those transactions in AR and then we would settle and match those up and the bank statement would be matched and finished. Uh, this parsing data as well can be used for ZBA accounts or sweep accounts if you've got certain accounts that transfer money in and out. Um, so they can be used to do those ledger entries or bank entries as well. We can create these user-defined lookups can use any of the account types, create any kind of ledger, bank, customer, vendor uh, project or anything that, that needs to be done there. The, when we create that GL journal, uh, as you know, until you post the journal, it's not over into the bank module and therefore it needs to be over to the bank module in order to be fully settled. So uh, we have an option to auto post that GL journal. And then finally we also have added to the AP inquiry screen a cleared item uh, uh, column. So right next to the item where it says the date that the item was created uh, for outgoing AP payments, um, we also then as soon as we have a match from our import, a file import, we post the date that that item was cleared. Uh, that, that can be valuable if you were, say, reconciling monthly, but bringing in your files daily or weekly. As soon as we bring them in, independent of the reconciliation process, we'll update that cleared item column. So your AP clerks will have that, uh, that quick visibility to those incoming items. So enough with the slides. Let's go over and take a look at the software. And as Jonas said, this may be the last time that you'll see us demonstrate it on 2012. Uh, so our upcoming webinars <clears throat> will be focused more around the AX7 platform. Of course, we're very committed to the AX2012 uh, platform as long as Microsoft and resellers and customers need and want it, uh, and we'll keep enhancing it. So we have enhancements coming this year, which we'll put into both 2012 and into uh, uh, AX7 as well. So this is the overall uh, uh, menu for the e-banking suite. As you can see, it's a menu item just like any other menu item in AX. We leverage all the standard functionality uh, in AX uh, um, in terms of how the screens work. It's all part of the AX database. It's not an a, a in-the-cloud solution that's integrated on that fashion. It's tightly integrated with, with AX. The bank reconciliation area is, is down over in, in this area under the bank under periodic. So let's start off with the first part of the process. Uh, as we talked about, uh, there were files that get imported. As they get imported, they get added to the screen. Uh, immediately, they get added to the screen. Uh, and as you highlight each one, uh, you have the date that it came in and the, the status. Uh, because this is an AX grid, uh, and you could, you could set up an alert, it would actually track this. So if any of these uh, items that had an error, 
you could be emailed that information. Uh, so a certain group could be emailed to notify that the something happened with incoming file. Uh, if you can see that the, there's information telling you why there's an error, what what might have gone wrong. Uh, here's a file that came in. If I drill in, I can see the transactions. Uh, so this again is taking our mapping and having us look into the transactions and see uh, the different pieces, uh, different kinds of transactions, interest, deposit, a check, etc. Uh, this is just this is taking our mappings and, and showing what the uh, what the transaction would look like. It's really for a kind of an audit purpose. Uh, this is not part of the reconciliation process itself. For every file that comes in, we keep track of the history of what happened to that file. Uh, so in this case, we can see that the, the file had three different uh, bank statements. It created three different bank statements. It created a GL uh, journal uh, as part of that. We'll talk about that in a second. It showed us that it was trying to auto post it and it failed. There may have been some uh, um, uh, some issue that, that occurred there, and so you'd have to drill into that. But we get a complete history uh, as the as activity occurs against this file, so you can track that that fully here. The next step in the process after they come in is you review the unmatched transactions. Uh, so the the thing to note here as well is that you can see that this screen has a company column and a bank account column. Uh, so uh, again, you can see that there are transactions for two different bank accounts. If you have multiple legal entities, you'd see all those here. Again, a big plus over AX is that you can have a, a group of people or an individual focusing on this screen and see, get visibility across all your bank, uh, bank accounts. Uh, frequently, you'll find that banks will send you a file and it'll have numerous bank accounts in it. Um, if you have 50 bank accounts, that file will have, typically have all of those bank accounts. Again, as we process them, we bring them all in relative to each bank account. Keep it separate, of course, as we'll talk about in a minute. But you get the visibility across them all uh, in this one screen. Uh, so what you can do, this screen is designed for an exception. So say you brought in 100 transactions and 90 of them were perfect and got all matched. You wouldn't see those here. The goal is not to review everything because as you get to the large volume, there's no way that you can review every single transaction. So the idea is you build up rules that do the matching as much as they, you can on your own, and then this screen is used for those exceptions. So what I'm going to do is flip here. I'm going to focus on this USMF Opera account. And what we've got here is that you see these little check marks is saying that it's pre-matched. So what's happened with these transactions is there's a column called GL Created. These transactions came in, and there was a mapping rule that said uh, to create a GL journal. And what happened is it created the GL journal, but it wasn't posted, so it's sitting here. We're going to focus in on this particular one here. Uh, so this particular line here, we have a $224 and $12, uh, $0.12 cent transaction. Uh, down below, uh, for each transaction, we have the kind of rule that was appropriate for that transaction. In this case, it was a mapping rule. Uh, it tells us what the mapping rule was. We'll talk about that, uh, and then we can drill into the general journal. As we get into the general journal, uh, this was the journal that was created. Uh, this was done automatically based on our rules, and it came in and it put it to it was an interest paid description that came from the bank statement. Uh, we brought in that dollar amount, the ledger, the account type, and the offset account. It was all automated by our rules, our mapping rules, and so it created the GL journal. The next step, of course, would be to review these and post this journal. Uh, once you have your rules cooking and you really have the process under, under your uh, control, uh, you can set it up that would auto post this journal. So the journal would auto post and actually that transaction wouldn't even appear any longer uh, in this screen because it would have been taken care of. Uh, so also down here if we uh, if I filter it again I look through a couple of other items. Uh, we can see a confidence level here. Uh, if I highlight on this we can see that this is a matching rule that did this item. Uh, it was a date and amount match it was at step number five. We could go over here and drill into the rule. I'll talk about that in a little bit. And it was set at a confidence level of 60. That's because we matched on date and amount, which isn't quite as good as uh, an amount and a reference number. So let me go back here to USMF. Uh, again, on any of these items, uh, this is what you have here is the list of those items that are unreconciled that we couldn't figure out either through matching or mapping and you need to reconcile them manually. Uh, and so then you can do a pull down. So these are the bank statement items, and now you're going to go and look for it uh, in AX in order to match it up. As soon as you do that, the item would uh, go off the screen and would no longer be needed here. So you just go down here by exception and clear up the items. 
And once those are done, then the reconciliation is virtually done. We'll talk about that in a second. So again, after you've done that reconciliation, again, then here's that overview screen um, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, here's where you've got the various companies you might have here we've got multiple bank accounts we can drill in and, and sort and order by them if you have someone that's focused on a particular bank account in a per particular part of the world they can focus on that it shows the bank statement dates it gives you those opening and ending balance the unreconciled amounts uh, the, the counts the total transactions in those bank statements uh, the unmatched counts that are here and then the, this would be the date if it was fully reconciled automatically it would have the date of the reconciliation here uh, this is similar to what you have in AX, but ag again, uh, this is a cross bank account and a cross company, which makes makes it the, the, the difference maker there. So again, you can filter it based on uh, any of that criteria. So everything that we've done here in terms of bringing in and reconcile is, is, is basically uh, integrated with AX in terms of we update the standard AX process. So if I go to cash and bank management, go to bank account, uh, we leverage the, the standard uh, uh, reconciliation in AX, not the advanced. The advanced, uh, we cannot use the advanced piece. That would be turned off, and we leverage the standard AX piece. So if I go in here to the operating account we were talking about and go into reconciliation, and I'm going to go into the, um, the 123115 uh, bank account, uh, and this is all standard AX as to be very recognizable to you. Uh, we go into this screen, very recognizable as well. Um, and what we have here, uh, what you'll notice is this is all disabled. That's because we're managing the process of clearing these items. So you don't do it manually here. You would do it over in our screen. Uh, to drill in, to, uh, to deal with our screen, then it's available here as well. Um, and so you have the, the transactions that are now filtered based on this set of data, this statement, not across all your open items. Um, and you can take a look at those items that are unmatched. Again, here you can manually go in here and, uh, and do the reconciliation. Uh, these items here that are marked as GL created, uh, the reason they're not marked over here is because that journal has not been posted. So at this point, in order for us to do the final reconciliation, that journal item would have to be posted. Once that's posted, these would be fully matched, and then we'd be done. Also from here is where we can access our click and match workbench. And so coming back over here into click and match, uh, up the top we have a grid that has all those transactions in this time frame that are unreconciled um, uh, in AX. And down at the bottom are those, tra uh, those statement transactions we've yet to uh, match up as well. You can check off as many as you like up here with as many as you like down here. And as long as the number goes to zero, we can do that. We can do one-to-one -one or many-to-many -many type matching as well. So with that being done, uh, bring those back, finish those up, get those all matched up here, finished off. And then this is, if this went to zero, unreconciled went to zero, then of course your reconcile account button would be enabled and you could click that and finish the reconciliation. If um, the process that we did from the import side all went through and those 80 transactions matched, the 20 were added and those GLs posted, and this went to zero, we then have an option that would automate the reconciliation as well. So again, it could be a complete hands-off process from import, matching, mapping, and full reconciliation if the, uh, the unreconciled was, went to zero. So that covers the, uh, the overview that I wanted to touch on. Again, uh, this then represents that full uh, reconciliation view, uh, uh, as I mentioned before. Uh, let me spend just a couple minutes looking at some of the setup, uh, and then we can get, go over and get some questions. So again, in terms of file formats, uh, unlike AX, this is all very user-friendly. So these are electronic bank formats. If, say, you've got a comma delimited file for a bank that, uh, that doesn't have any of those standards, you simply come in here and go to field layout, and then you can just uh, create new entries and, and do your mapping directly to the, uh, the field. So if you have a file, I come over here and take a look at a, a comma delimited file. Nope, looks like I'm getting reconnected. So I'm not sure. 
not sure what's going on there. Uh, and maybe we best uh, go over to questions now. Uh, if, if I my um, image got re disconnected, I'm not sure we're going to be able to go forward there. Um, so, Jonas, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Great. So let me just wrap up here. I'm sorry about that. I don't know what, what, what happened there. But um, again, uh, what we talked about just now is the full cash management of automation focusing on bank rec. As you can see, the, we have other modules that are available, other feature sets as well. Uh, and at this point, uh, if I can't get access to those uh, that other screen, probably best if we uh, open this up for questions. Uh, let me go over here. Ainsley, uh, do you want to begin that process? Let's see. Ainsley, are you there? Can you all hear me now? I can yes. hear you, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, the unmute button is golden. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, okay, so there's a, few all, there's a few ways that you all can ask questions. As you can tell, you're uh, muted by default, but there's a, there's a few tools here. So in the GoToWebinar toolbar, there is a place where you can post a question. So you can just type a question to us and we'll uh, post it to Tim and um, you can just write your question in that way. You can also send me a chat message. If you'd like us to unmute you so that you can ask your question out loud, then uh, there's a little icon that lets you raise your hand. So if you can just find the little yellow palm, uh, you should be able to just click that and that'll raise your hand so that you can ask questions. Uh, sorry about the, the technical issue there with Tim's image, uh, but this gives us some time to ask questions. We've got a slew of people on the session, so feel free to post your question either way and I'll unmute you or ask it. So uh, I think the first question is me, whether this session is being recorded. And indeed, it is uh, being recorded for all the folks who registered for uh, the session, if they're on your team and they weren't able to attend, we'll send them a copy of the recording. And then for all of you that are on the session, you'll get a copy of the recording. And if you have, uh, if you're a reseller on the on the call and you have a customer that you think would be interested in this session, of course, you can send the recording on to them as well. Let's see what other questions we have here. Uh, it says, Tim, what is the status of AX7 RTW is e-banking available for uh, the RTW version? Yes, it is. The the screenshots you saw uh, are from the RTW version. That is available right now. Um, what happened is when we began our our our, um, our, our plans with uh, with AX7, we started last April, and so uh, the the product that's work that's available today is our feature set from last April. Uh, we had a lot of great features added during last year. Uh, later this month, we'll have uh, the, uh, and that's available on RTW. So we have a, a, a product today, it's on our AX7 RTW. Um, at the end of this month, we'll have a product that's fully feature compatible with our 2012 version uh, that will also, it's also on RTW. So it's it's already finished. We, had, we brought all, all that code over. It's in testing now. and It'll be in testing for two or three weeks. Um, and then that full product will be available. So the answer is yes and yes. Uh, we have one today with a feature set that's a little bit older, and later this month we'll have the RTW AX7 with our current feature set, all, all the great features that you know in 2012. Okay, uh, next question, implementation time for the bank reconciliation product. Sure, great question. Um, so the the issue there is the number of legal entities, the number of bank accounts, the number of banks. Um, and so we kind of you have a rule of thumb that if you have one bank account, one legal entity, and one um, uh, one bank, uh, it's roughly two two or three days uh, to get it set up, configured, uh, train your users, go through testing, and then do uh, you know user acceptance testing. So that's it's a fairly short amount of time. But as you can imagine, if you have uh, 300 bank accounts and the, the setup and configuration of those is quite a bit different, you know, they're not, not all the same, then we have, there's more time that's required. Our team is very glad to train your teams uh, to how to do that because, again, that can be, end up being repetitive. 
Um, and so therefore, it's just a matter of uh, getting you trained on how to set up those transaction types and set up the, uh, the, the mapping and matching rules. And if they're, if they're very much the same, it doesn't take that much more. But if they're different, it can, can get uh, more time can be involved. Uh, when you, if you're interested and you have a prospect or you are, you are a user, uh, we just need to know the number of bank accounts, the number of banks, and the number of uh, legal entities. And we can give you a, a more refined estimate over and above that 20 hours. Thanks, Tim. It looks like we uh, keep on coming, folks. If you have more questions, we have a little bit of time. So feel free to post a question. Uh, the next one is uh, representative of a lot of folks that are on this call. We're coming from all over the world. So how about um, support in foreign countries, India, Nigeria, et cetera? Sure. So uh, again, the uh, as you saw, what we were about to see uh, in terms of setting up formats, we find that many, many countries, many banks will have a, a CSV format uh, or some kind of a delimited format. And we can handle any of those very, very easily. So it's just a matter of having uh, the data in a, in a form that we can read it. Um, we recently, uh, we have people that have pipe delimited formats. We can deal with those as well. Um, so it, it just depends if the bank can provide an electronic file that has the, the statement information, which virtually all of them can. Uh, again, the MT940 is common in Europe. In terms of Nigeria and India, um, I, I don't think we've seen any there, but there's, I don't think there's any reason. We, we, again, we, in, in all our history, we, if we've come across something that we haven't seen, we, we deal with it. Uh, and again, I think if it's not a standard, uh, usually a CSV file is, is available, and we can certainly deal with those. Okay, let's see. Looks like that was our last question. We'll give it just another minute. Uh, folks, if you have another question that you'd like to post or raise your hand to ask one live, that we've got a couple more minutes on our on our side. Let me see if I can get my <clears throat> It looks like I may be getting my uh, image back again. So. Okay. That sounds good. It looks like folk, folks are staying on. So we'll we'll give it a minute and. You can see my screen now. We sure yes. can. Okay, great. Let me just wrap up a couple other pieces here that I wanted to show. Um, so we were talking about um, again file formats. Again, very very easy to configure. Again, we support many different standard formats of so the BAI2 format or the MT940. Again, you can see here uh, the CAMT053. Again, globally, the formats generally are not an issue for us at all. Uh, once you get a format identified, then again, there's a transaction type setup piece. Um, and this is where the bank will send over different transaction types. And we can affiliate those with AX bank transaction types. And then we can set those against a matching group or a mapping group. Again, if it's a, a particular kind of a transaction, so this is a fee transaction, uh, we can just say this goes against the default matching group. Uh, we can talk about that, and then we can, or we can, we can say it's a mapping group, meaning it's something that we need to add into AX. So this is all configurable. Uh, again, no programming required uh, setup that you need to deal with. Uh, over here we have our different rules. We have parsing rules over here uh, where we have these are the ways that we extract that information out of descriptions uh, so we can go in and, and, and find which field we want to parse. Uh, we have a character range parsing. We have a fine string parsing, meaning look for this particular piece in the description. Uh, we have custom parsing, meaning you could write a custom method 
that's got a very particular way to do things. So you set up a parsing rule. Uh, again, our matching rules are here. Uh, they're organized around rule groups. And as I mentioned, you can have multiple rules within a rule group. So the first one may deal with a reference number to another uh, number, the number in the statement to a number in AX. Uh, here you can see you can set up tolerances. Uh, what do you do if you have a duplicate of uh, the kind of confidence thing? So these are all set up. And what the, the algorithm does is goes down through this rule, uh, rule group until it finds a rule that it, um, that, that it hits on. And as I mentioned before, here we're doing kind of a reference number and amount, which are pretty good matches. Then we get down to date and amount. And now that we put a confidence level at 60. So that's, uh, that's how you would set up your, your matching rules. Uh, your mapping rules then uh, likewise. And so here's an incoming transaction. So how are we going to deal with that? Uh, we then have a look up against that. So we say if we find this word Pelican uh, in the parse data, uh, then we're going to put it over to a particular customer, uh, this particular customer. So you can set up a very comprehensive set of rules of saying things coming in, we find certain pieces of data, and then we can, we can map it and coordinate and create those different, uh, different types of rules. Uh, very, very configurable, very powerful, again, when you first get the product, we have some default rules here. As you can imagine, the matching rules we can have. And people find that maybe about 80% of their things can with those rules. And then it takes to, to get it more refined, you need to come in and start to configure these to match your particular uh, customer's needs and or requirements. Uh, so th that's kind of how the process works. Glad I was able to show that. Uh, we can get back to the questions and then wrap up uh, Ainsley. Any more questions, Ainsley? Yep, it looks like we have one more question. I'm going to do my best to phrase this accurately. It says, what is the best methodology for associating financial dimensions to bank charges that are recorded as part of the bank reconciliation process, native AX, or does SKG handle? Well, one more time on that, if you would. I'm sorry. Okay. That's <laughs> fine. We could, and and uh, John's the one that asked the question. John, you can always, if we're not answering accurately, you can always reach out to us and we'll take it offline. It says, what is the best methodology for associating financial dimensions to bank charges that are recorded as part of the bank reconciliation process? Sure. A, native AX, or does SKG handle? Yeah. So again, if we're bringing in transactions, the uh, um, there are for each kind of rule that we set up, we can set up the um, financial dimensions. So when we're creating, if we're bringing in char uh, 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 fees or something like that, we can bring in the, uh, the offset dimensions uh, that come in with it. So in our mapping rules, we can set up those, uh, those particular dimensions. So the, it's part of our, our, our process of bringing in those transactions into AX. There's a way to set up and reference those dimensions. Over here, I believe it's over here, um, that when we set up the transaction types over here, um, and I forget, I think, I, yeah, the financial dimension. So if we bring in a fee or something of that sort, uh, we can then reference the financial dimensions here, or we can have it further down uh, at the map mapping rule, uh, lookup rule as well. So you can have it at the transaction level. You can put the financial dimensions that will be used or if you go down to the, to the lookup table where it's specific, you can put a dimension based on each uh, kind of uh, entry that gets added as well. So it's done through the uh, transaction type setup and or the mapping rules. Okay, John, thank you. And he gives you an A plus for answering that. <laughs> okay. okay, that was our last question. So if you want to put up the wrap up slide with our contact information, yep. I think we're we're good. Folks, if, if you have questions, you can always email us. Right. Um, just one uh, note, uh, one more note before we wrap up. Um, just to make you aware that we are running these sessions uh, every other week. The next one coming up uh, is uh, April 20th. 
uh, around the same time. And at that session, that will be an introduction to the overall uh, banking and treasury suite. So if you have colleagues um, or customers that you think uh, would be interested in seeing the, the overall suite, uh, feel free to, to extend an invitation to them and keep this session in mind. You can, of course, connect with us and, and stay up to date on the sessions that we're running in the future via our website, on LinkedIn, and Twitter, of course. And with that, uh, thank you very much, everybody, for joining uh, our webinar today. Our contact information is here in case you have any additional questions or would like to reach out to us. Thank you very much, and uh, have a nice day. Thank you. Have a good day or evening, wherever you are. Thanks, Tim, for your time. Thank you all. Bye-bye.